Chapter 5 Vivian followed Token and Lewis down the majestic south wing staircase to the great chamber on the ground floor. Francis and the dean stood near the foyer waiting for them. Ah, Mr. Fox re-emerges from his hole, the dean chuckled. Gorgon, Vivian gave him a sarcastic smile. With him, the noble Mr. Almonte, the insidious Mr. De Silva, the dean gestured to Token and Lewis in turn. Both boys scowled but nodded their greeting. Then with a racket of a collapsing sports shed, Tank appeared on the landing above them, lugging the duffel over his shoulder the way a hunter lugs his kill. And last, but by no means the least, Mr. Gorgon concluded, the staunch Mr. Thompson. Mr. Gorgon, the big boy grunted. The group of boys reached the ground and crossed the floor to where the adults stood. The dean waited until they had arrived before leaning down so his nose was inches from Vivian's. From now on, Mr. Fox, you may address me as either Mr. Gorgon or Dean, as all the other children here do. Vivian wrinkled his nose. The man's breath was foul. I think I'll just keep calling you Gorgon, he grinned. It suits you. Lewis barked out a laugh, which quickly turned into a fit of coughing following angry glares from the other two boys. Vivian, that's enough of your cheek, Francis hissed. That's quite all right, Miss Basher. The dean broke in with a chuckle that was almost fatherly. You can't run a children's facility without copping a little schoolyard stick. He glanced at Vivian. It keeps you young if you know how to play along. He leaned closer still, and his mouth broke open. Vivian got another look at his crooked teeth. Very well, Mr. Fox. You call me Gorgon, and I'll call you Deviant. Deal, he said in a voice barely above a whisper. Vivian did not look away or blink or lower his head. He was aware of the worried expressions of the other boys, and he knew he was racking up reputation points the longer he continued the old back and forth. He held his smile, staring the man down. Deal. The dean nodded and straightened. Well, I won't bore you with embellishments, Mr. Fox. These boys can do that, I'm sure. Just the facts will do. This is the South Sitting Room, and every morning at six, all the children gathered here to be assigned their morning tasks. Tomorrow you will be among them, am I understood? Morning tasks? Francis frowned. Part of the program here is practical application which teaches real-world skills, the dean explained. I told you we would not see the children, and that was because right now most of them will be outside performing agricultural activities. Others will be in the kitchen, or upper floors, learning maintenance or housework. We do not leave our children incapable when they eventually leave this place. Sure, if you want to grow up as a janitor, Lewis sniggered, but a glare from the dean silenced him. Vivian smiled inwardly. People like Lewis had a tendency to put their foot in their mouths, but rarely got anyone else into trouble. He looked at the other two boys. Token and Tank were both wearing surly expressions but kept their heads slightly bowed. They knew who was boss even though they clearly didn't like the dean. How many children can you take? Francis asked. We can accommodate up to 300 if we need to. That many? Francis breathed. Far from that now, thankfully, the dean replied. Mr. Almonte, how many of your fellows do we have staying here right now? Token's frown lifted and his eyes rolled upward in thought. I would say a about a hundred, Mr. Gorgon. One hundred and five, to be exact, the dean corrected. And the addition of Mr. Fox makes that one hundred and six. Frances looked toward the dean, and her large blue eyes seemed to sharpen a little. And I'm sure, like the others, he is in very good hands. However, please be advised, Mr. Gorgon, that I will be exercising my legal right to visit on a fortnightly basis. Of course, the dean sniffed providing the circumstances allow it. Regardless of circumstances, Francis corrected him, straightening so she stood a little taller than the dean. Wow, she is hot, Lewis murmured, then let out a squawk as Token jabbed him with his elbow. So, Gorgon, about the second floor, Vivian began with a grin, but Token cut him off. There's only 20 minutes until lunch, Mr. Gorgon. That's only just enough time to show Vivian around. The dean looked from Vivian to Token before shooting a disinterested glance at Francis. Yes, I think it is time for you to be moving along. Turning to Vivian, he bent down and extended his hand. Welcome to Merkwater Orphanage, Mr. Fox. Vivian looked at the dean, then at Francis before accepting the gesture and shaking the dean's hand. He resisted the painful pressure as long fingers squeezed down. Might I say, the dean said with a grim smile, I'm sorry you have to be here. Vivian nodded. You will be Gorgon.